Greetings fellow Tubadors and welcome back to the channel that gets increasingly more angry in direct proportion to the increase in publicly disseminated idiocy. Well, back so soon, back so soon. What have I been shouting at today? Well, all sorts of things. Um, I shouted at the radio because Jeremy Corbyn was talking cack again on Radio 4. Um, I shouted at the TV because Boris Johnson was talking cack on there. Um, more shouting at the TV a bit later when Nigel Farage came on and he was talking cack as well. And then I started to shout at the Sky Plus box because the rain made planet rock keep dropping out. But that's what you get when you live as high above sea level as we do. Uh, but despite living as high up in the air as we do, we still can't see Hereford Cathedral because the earth is curved. Get that into your heads, Flurfers. <laughs> Calm yourself, silly Welshman. Quite right, Your Holiness. Let us chill. But probably not for long. Mm. So, today I had something pop up in my little sort of YouTube suggestions thingy uh, from a content provider whom I was not familiar with. Um, this individual is Mr. Thrive and Survive. Now, a quick click on the link and a few moments of content later, and as is usual in these situations, I quickly became very angry as this torrent of presumptive nonsense and pseudo-scientific horse doo-doo started to fill my internet cables. What I should really do before uh, clicking on a video link is to take a look at the provider's content, since this is usually a pretty good indication of what's likely to come up. So if you're going to watch their uninformed biovolcano, at least then you can be somewhat mentally prepared. Now, if I had taken this sensible approach, I wouldn't have had to shout so loud, um, and I could have avoided frightening my poor dog. Uh, but a quick look at their content before I let you into what it was that I watched from their pustulating bubo of a channel. There we go, whole bunch of fluffied nonsense. Flat Earth Experiments, yeah, good luck with those. Uh, natural Medicine, or as it used to be called, Snake Oil. And what's this contradiction to the channel's regular mindless content? Critical thinking? What the fuck the fucking fuck? From the video I watched, there wasn't much of that critical thinking going on. So, let's get into the meat of why this video really peed me off, okay? Um, it's for the same reasons that, that I get pissed off and angrier with every flat ad on the planet, but especially those who like to present themselves as having some kind of academic authority, um, even though they appear gloriously unhindered by any sort of further education whatsoever. Now, in the video I watched, this twatnagger is attempting to prove that humans have never been in space by citing the spacesuits designed by NASA and various other trusted manufacturers, that they could not withstand the phenomenal sucking forces encountered within the vacuum of outer space. Now, many of you will, I'm sure, have already spotted the, the fly of idiocy in Mr. Thrive and Survive's ointment of ignorance. Um, anyway, this is what he has to say on the subject of comparative differences between atmosphere and vacuum. Hey everyone, Christmas will thrive and survive. May have to hang with me just a little bit here, but I promise you it's going to be worth it. I'm going to make this as short and sweet as possible. I uh, just did a Google search. What is the vacuum of space in Tor? Uh, the lower the number, the more the vacuum is. Outer space, 10 to the uh, negative sixth power. That's the minimum. That is the minimum you get in outer space, according to NASA. To 1 times 10 to the negative 17th. Okay, some impressively small numbers there. So let's designate our atmosphere as being 1, okay? And why not? Because it is. So we'll just go with that for now, okay? So our atmosphere is 1, and the minimum differential in space being 10 to the negative 6, that's about 1 ten thousandth of our atmosphere, okay? Okay, right. Continue, sir. So, what does it take on Earth to 
what kind of materials are needed to be able to sustain the minimum 10 to the negative 6. Let's take a look. Space Power Facility is a NASA facility used to test space flight hardware under simulated launch and space flight conditions. Yep, an impressive facility, no doubt about that. Uh, built in 1969, uh, used for testing all manner of space flight technology from uh, bio suits to, to rocket propulsion system, and even used by lovely Professor Brian Cox uh, in his feather versus bowling ball in a vacuum drop test. Now I'll stick a link to that video uh, in the description below for those who might mistake buoyancy for gravity, okay? I suppose I could say who might mistake utter bullshit made fantasy for actual scientific fact. I could say that, but I won't. So, so what is this impressive marvel of a spaceflight training facility made of that it can endure such phenomenal stresses such as the enormous vacuum of space? Let's look at the concrete chamber enclosure. The concrete chamber enclosure serves not only as a radiological shield, but also as a primary vacuum barrier from atmospheric pressure. 130 feet in diameter and 150 feet high, the chamber was designed to withstand atmospheric pressure outside of the chamber at the same time vacuum conditions are occurring within. Now, let's think spacesuit. Spacesuit is just the opposite. You have vacuum outside, pressure inside. The concrete thickness varies from 6 to 8 feet or 1.8 to 2.4 meters. 6.8 or 6 to 8 feet is the thickness of the concrete around the barrier. It's not the only thing here that's a bit thick, though, is it? <laughs> think about that. So you think, well, that's plenty for a vacuum chamber, right? Uh-uh. And contains a leak, a leak tight steel containment barrier embedded within. Every vacuum chamber they build has to have not only thick concrete, if they're building of any size, but it has to have a steel containment barrier. barrier. You know why? Because even eight feet of concrete in a vacuum of 10 to the negative six, the air will suck through it. And there, ladies and gentlemen, is the major flaw in this idiot's argument. He has absolutely zero understanding of physics whatsoever if he thinks a vacuum is capable of sucking. The only thing that sucks here is this dude's knowledge of science. What a stupid This is the important part. This is where cognitive dissonance will kick in for many people. So we were told that man landed on the moon and walked in the vacuum of space on the moon, plus space walks in between with other different launches and things like that, correct? Yeah. Long before they built this facility, they were supposedly walking in space. So... Uh, if it takes six to eight feet of concrete and a steel barrier to contain a vacuum, let's see what the Apollo astronauts used in their spacesuits. Link for this below, the Apollo A7L spacesuit materials list. Now, this is the only one we're going to be interested in here, the extra vehicular suit. Now, we'll cut away from that because, to be perfectly honest with you, he goes on at quite some length from this point displaying a spectacularly impressive demonstration of the cognitive dissidence that he points out at the beginning of the clip. Um, if anyone is interested in seeing um, the materials list that went into constructing the Apollo suits, I'll put a link to the Smithsonian site in the description below. Uh, to be honest, it's essentially what you would expect for something of that nature uh, built in the 1960s. Um, nylon, mylar, neoprene, teflon, um, in fact, deep sea submersibles were f built far, far more strongly than the spacesuits that the Apollo missions took up with them into space. So, ah, anger, <sighs> calm. Why did I get so angry at this prize turnips presentation? Well, firstly, he goes on like he has some academic understanding of the subject that he's talking about, um, just like anyone 
of a number of floofers or space deniers, mud flooders, anti-vaxxers and general dumbasses. The point is that this individual is obviously impressed by the numbers he has read online. You know, vacuums measured in the region of 10 to the negative 6 to, you know, 10 to the negative 12, etc. and all the rest of it. But he obviously has absolutely no idea what those numbers actually represent. Now, we said earlier that we will classify our, classify our atmosphere as one, okay? Because it is, it is, we are living in one atmosphere. That's about 760 tor or a little above 100 kilopascals. Now, imagine outer space with its pressure hovering at around, say, let's say 10 to the negative eight. Now, our friend thinks that this is such a phenomenal difference in pressure that even an eight foot thick concrete wall surrounding the NASA vacuum chamber would not stop the air from being sucked directly through that concrete. But it's actually only a difference of one atmosphere. Now, let's look at his spacesuit theory. Okay, because obviously you have a spacesuit that's pressurized and the vacuum of space surrounding it. Now, he has this idea that it would get sucked apart by this, this hard, special vacuum that seems to exist up there. Um, this is another example to prove his complete lack of knowledge. Vacuums, as most of you watching this, well, I'm sure know, do not suck. Okay, it is the pressure that is pushing outward. And as the pressure inside a spacesuit is only pushing at about one atmosphere, 760 tor, that's not really that much. In fact, the pressure inside your car tyres is much greater than the pressure outside it, and is therefore far higher than any pressure a spacesuit would experience on a spacewalk or on the moon. But your tyres do not fly apart. Okay? The pressure inside a can of coke is much greater in comparison to the outside atmosphere than a spacesuit is compared to the vacuum of space. And here's one that the mindless brain dead and the disseminators of general idiocy will certainly not believe. But if a hole appeared in the side of the International Space Station, let's say for instance it was hit by a micrometeorite, okay, and that hole appeared that was about three millimeters in diameter and the internal atmosphere started leaking okay now the crew aboard um very highly trained they would probably feel a little worried but they wouldn't panic because they would know how to handle it they prepare for these things um so the atmosphere is leaking out into space many of these these floofers and, and space deniers would probably think oh my god that's it yeah well if they were up there but they're not because it's all done in a studio in hollywood and All they would have to do to stop the atmosphere from leaking out of the International Space Station and into space is use a single layer of duct tape. Why would this work? Because there isn't a 10 to the negative 6, 8, 10 or 17 sucking on it. There is nothing more than a one atmosphere pressure pushing on it. And that is a fact. So, the next time you floofers, uh, space deniers and ultra-conspiracists uh, want to know something, don't stay inside the rarefied vacuum of your own echo chambers. Go and ask someone who knows. Okay? Someone with a very, very basic education should be able to help you out. Besides, think about it. If your car needed fixing, would you take it to a mechanic? Or would you take it to someone who only had an opinion? on car mechanics. Now I don't doubt for one moment that um, this Thrive and Survive character thinks he knows what he's talking about and that is a common problem. It's, it's prevalent across the YouTube platform, across all parts of society. Um, people think that just because they have an opinion on something that they are qualified to speak on that subject. Now they have no education in that subject. Um, but they have an almost supernatural ability to believe that what they think must be the truth because they thought it. Um, it it's a classic example of the Dunning-Kruger effect. A lot of these people are very top left. Um, if you've not come across 
the, um, the Dunning Kruger principle. I'll I'll put a link in the description below. It describes these um, flat Earth mentors, especially, very very well. Um, so they they have no education in the subject they speak of, but they're quite happy to speak at great length, satisfied as they are that their own level of knowledge far surpasses anyone who has actual academic qualifications in that subject. Now couple that with the equally unthinking individuals who are exposed to that nonsense via you know a, a well-presented YouTube channel perhaps you know and rather than spend their precious time doing their own research or getting themselves educated they simply take everything that their Wi-Fi beams into their tiny brains as absolute truth. And that my fellow tubadors is why I have been very angry today. <sighs> calm. I am going to get calm. I'm going to go downstairs and I'm going to make myself a lovely, lovely cup of tea. Because I'm British. Which means the only thing we ever ingest into our bodies is tea, beer and cucumber sandwiches. So, thank you for watching. Um, I'm sorry if my anger has, uh, has spread, but these things do tend to wind me up. As I said in my last video, there's far too much idiocy about the place. Far too many people willing to rely on the opinion of others rather than to look into a subject themselves and make up their own minds. Anyway, that's enough of me for now. I've invaded your YouTube channels uh, twice in the past couple of days. Well, I'll have a bit of a rest. I'll be back in a few days once I've found something else, no doubt, that winds me up that needs ranting about. But until then, if you've enjoyed, please do consider subscribing. There's a little subscribe button around here somewhere. Just give it a little tickle. If you want to be alerted to the next time I go off on one, click the bell notification and YouTube will send you a lovely message on my behalf. But thank you for watching. Until next time, au revoir.